Let us move to lecture number 12. Lecture number 12 is uh, focused towards compression molding process. Compression molding process can be used for both thermoset polymer, it can also used for thermoplastic polymers, a thermoplastic polymer matrix composite. So, that is why I thought like I will put this as the uh, one of the last processes before starting into thermoplastic composites uh, overlap. So, in this lecture we will try to have a small introduction followed by it will be raw materials. So, different types of polymers then molding process. So, what are all the process uh, and then the process parameters which are very important and advantage disadvantages and process applications. So, I would like to repeat my statement which I told in the beginning of this uh, course itself manufacturing has three important pr parameters one is pressure time and temperature. So, all the three parameters have to be optimally used to produce a required good quality output. So, here in compression molding this is a process which is a perfect example for what I have told. So, in compression molding process we use pressure, time and temperature all the three at the required weightages so that you get a sound quality output. And uh, so, here compression mold moment I said a mold you can have a both surface front surface and the back surface or both the surfaces we would like to have a very good surface finish. So, when you use a mold we always get this. So, a compression mold is one of the fastest polymer uh, composite uh, processing method. It is a closed mold process. So, you are pretty sure about the quality of the output that means to say the surface quality uh, both front and back you will get a good quality output. Uh, so, this makes the product which is to be confined within a cavity. So, you then it leads to another thinking that yes this process needs a dye, yes it needs a dye. So, then a predetermined quantity of a mold charge uh, is placed in a dye cavity. So, like in injection molding process you have to inject some raw material such that this raw material flows inside the barrel and when it goes inside a die you try to get the output. So, here what happens they try to make the charge. So, here what molding charge I said. So, this molding charge is nothing but a polymer plus a reinforcing agent. So, this reinforcement agent can be chopped strand mat and the polymer can be thermoplastic or thermoset. So, it is kept inside a die. So, the mold charge can be bulk mold component or a sheet mold component that means to say it talks about the surface to volume ratio of the component. So, bulk mold compound or a sheet mold compound, sheet mold has a larger surface. Suppose, if this, this one uh, polymer and reinforcement you can mix it and prepare make a charge or what we do is we try to have a pre peg which is already there. A pre peg is a resin infused reinforcement you have it in terms of a sheet. It is something like your banded which I told earlier also. So, you have it. So, moment you remove the covering sheet top and bottom. So, immediately and if there is the required ambience around immediately it starts curing. So, you can also buy a pre peg and keep it inside the mold cavity to make a required output. So, the compression molding process is exhaustively used by automotive industry. So, automotive industry where they have a large surface area products where they wanted to make covers on a, on a bonnet they want to make or on a machine cover they wanted to move where it is basically a secondary structure it does not take, but uh, load it gives you a covering. So, they always use this compression mold uh, process. So, the auto industries has been using it uh, in a, as a, uh, using the stamping process for metal forming. So, for them it was so easy to make a charge and with lesser loads they were able to make good outputs. So, uh, they could, uh, so because of the existing knowledge they know on stamping, they could quickly have a good know how about the compression molding process. So, today compression molding process is very matured. So, people have understood all the process parameters, their effect of parameters, the flow patterns, and now they, uh, the auto industry is uh, 
uh, is producing components to their requirements. So, when I was talking about the compression molding, there are two types of press, one is a hot press, another one is a cold press. So, in a hot press what happens between the two plates, you start applying heat. So, why because they wanted to have a small thermal gradient, they would like to have a gradient so that this gradient will try to give you a sound product. So, the mold charge is heated while it is getting shaped and then what happens the plates keep continuing to apply that heat for some more time until the die is all locked and moment the, the time is reached the die is removed and then the component is released. So, the mold the charge whatever is kept there is heated and kept there so that you can have a better flowability properties. In a cold pressing the product is cured without applying heat. Interesting heat heat has a direct influence over the polymer matrix. More the heat for an for a thermo set charring will happen, more the heat for a thermoplast the viscosity will change, the flow pattern changes. So, this heat has to be very carefully handled. So, the product is cured without applying heat so that you get a, a sound product. So, basically if you do not apply so much of heat, so naturally you have to compensate it. So, the load which is applied on the on the component uh, is high. The parts are made up by hand layer process or are cold pressed for better consolidation and for better surface finish. So, here when we talk about die, you can have a solid die or you can have a flexible die. So, flexible die means you this is a top die, this is a bottom die. So, this, this is a die which is top and this is a die which is bottom, the load is applied here. If you want to apply, you can apply load on both positions, this is the lower die, this is the upper die, this is the upper die. You can have a die, these dies are made out of metal, the load is applied from the top. So, you have the charge which is put here, this is the polymer charge, so it is put here. So, we apply load, it can be one side, it can be on both sides to get the required output. Okay. So, here making this die is expensive, so people have come out with novel ideas making the die itself flexible. So, the advantage is this die uh, is flexible, so it exerts uniform pressure and it spreads through uh, so that you get a good product. Okay. So, uh, raw materials, sheet metal molding, so that is called as SMC and then bulk molding component, the only difference is surface area to volume ratio. So, the category of raw materials for making mold is reinforcement, fiber reinforcements are short fiber, you can also have particulate you want, you can also have whisker you want. Then you try to have a resin, you we try to add fillers because fillers are used to uh, fill up, fillers are basically used to are, are not added to give strength, but to reduce the weight. So, fillers are used, then chemical thickeners are used, releasing agents are used because this polymer when it is uh, the charge when it is in contact with both the dies, there is a possibility that if the die surface is not smooth, it might get sticked to that. So, or it, they might say pinching marks are seen. So, you can see that pinching mass in order to avoid it and have a smooth surface finish, we apply releasing agent and of course, additives for color we do. So, these are some of the raw materials which are added together to make a charge, so mold charge. So, again the mold can be sheet metal or bulk depending upon the surface to volume ratio of the component. Fiber reinforcement, so it can vary from 10 percent to 25 percent. Anything more than 25 percent the problem is it tries to restrict the polymer flow. So, the viscosity goes high and if the viscosity goes high then uh, and the flow does not happen properly, then within the stipulated time the, the polymer flow will not happen and reach at all points of the die. So, you might get a poor quality output and uh, the length of the fiber can vary from 6 millimeter to 12 millimeter. When you go for prepex, you can also use continuous fiber uh, or a oven rowing mat or a carbon rein, carbon uh, mat can be used to get the required output. Uh, so, the reinforcement in BMC bulk 
are basically glass, carbon, armed, sisla. Sisla are, are natural fibers. Sisla and other organic natural fibers are also used today to get the required output. For example, if you are looking at the uh, dive boards at the swimming pool, uh, so they are made out of uh, compression molding in, uh, in the amusement park dive boards where you can uh, just before falling into the pool, you can see that. So, that is made out of this. There people have started using glass fibers which are economical and people have also gone one step ahead in using sisla which is a natural fiber. So, for sheet metal it can go slightly higher. So, 10 to 35 percent and the length can go from 25 to 50 millimeters are used. The sheet metal are, uh, are commonly used for glass fiber roving of a chop strand mat of this length. So, recently continuous fibers are also used for this particular application. When you talk about resin, you have thermoset resin and you have a thermoplastic resin. So, thermoset uh, resins we have already dealt in lot. So, I do not want to repeat. So, one example is polyester, otherwise it is epoxy can be used. This is for bulk and when you uh, wanted to do for sheet, yes, you can also try uh, reducing the content, adding more the volume fraction, you can try it for sheet. So, the sheet metal must be made with resin system that, ha that will thicken to proper viscosity after impregnation of the reinforcement. This point is very, very important. So, we also add a curing agent uh, for uh, making this uh, composite. So, the curing agents are basically accelerators which are added so that it can try to uh, reduce the cycle time. So, the curing agent used in polyester mold compounds. So, I have taken only one example polyester are high temperature curing catalyst such as butyl TBPB which is T butyl per benzonate. T butyl pero, peroctate and benzylene peroxide BPO. All these things are used as catalyst for reducing the cycle time. The curing reaction is initiated by heat which decomposes the peroxide catalyst into free radicals. That is what is a mechanism which happens. These radicals activate cross linking. So, once cross linking happens thermoset cures and it forms a solid. So, the recommended curing temperature for TPBP which is nothing but T butyl per benzonate is around about 150 degree C and for TPBO butyl peroctate is around about 130 degrees. So, you can decide what temperature you want to operate by choosing a proper curing agent. Without a curing agent the time cycle time goes larger. Then filler is there are four groups of filler which are commonly used in mold making. One is silicate which is uh, inexpensive then carbonate, sulfonate and oxide. The filler size particles can be between 0.5 to 50 microns. Most of the fillers are produced from natural minerals uh, by appropriate grinding. So, basically what they do is they do a crushing process to get the required output. So, the desirable properties that are used to select a filler for the mold is one, it has to be low specific gravity, low cost, low oil adsorption, non-toxic, non-abrasive, ready to disperse chemical purity and the whiteness. All these things play a very, very important role for fillers. So, this is very important. This will try to tell you how do you choose a filler. So, what are the important properties which by which a filler can be chosen. What are chemical thickeners? So, chemical thickeners are materials that basically increases the viscosity of the component without curing. So, that means to say what? It tries to give you more shelf life or more time for curing. Suppose what happens if you have a very large surface area component and moment the heat is applied and the catalyst is added, it is quickly going to cure and moment it cures, what happens is it cures as islands. So, if it cures as islands, so between the island and the non-cure portion, there is always a possibility of a delamination. So, delamination is a defect where in which it will try to produce a poor quality output. So, in order to avoid and you in order to have a uniform spreading, we always add chemical thickeners. 
So, the chemical thickeners are basically to increase the viscosity of the compound without curing. So, the agents are uh, magnesium oxide, magnesium hydroxide, calcium oxide and calcium hydroxide. It is possible to control the rate of thickening and the degree of the final thickening by selectively combining the thickeners. So, if you can play with your choice, then you can try to have a very good thickening uh, agent. So, the thickening agent should be uniformly dispersed to get good results. The thickening can also be pre-dispersed in, in a non-active media, so that it can later start curing uh, when you apply heat and pressure. The releasing agents, which is the same which we used for a hand layer process, releasing agent to give a better surface on both sides. And generally what happens before releasing or during the time of releasing, there is always a possibility that it creates a damage on the surface of the composites. And in composites, even a small damage on the surface will try to deteriorate the quality of the product to a large extent or exponentially. So, releasing agent are used for better release of the product without damage. Internal releasing agents are more effectively used for external releasing agents. So, internal is internally within the uh, dye I am talking about. So, internal releasing agents are mixed with mole compounds and they are usually long chain fatty acid and their salts. So, basically this is first it is rubber, it is coated with, uh, with the releasing agent and then we place a dye. While heating they migrate the surface and prevents the bond. Of, uh, to the resin. So, now it does not react with the resin and form some new compound. So, while heating they migrate to the surface and prevent the bonding of the resin with the tool. So, that is what it does a true function. The releasing agent are chosen in such a way such that the melting point is just below the molding temperature. So, you should know that. See for example, uh, when you are uh, we always use while making cake a butter paper. What is the function of the butter paper? Is nothing but a releasing agent. When we prepare good food stuff, we always try to give initially an onion, uh, an oil coating. So this oil coating is basically nothing but a releasing agent. Okay, oil coating or a butter coating or a ghee coating. It's all basically acts as a releasing agent. So what is uh, how do you choose the releasing agent? So the releasing agent is chosen in such a way such that the melting point is just below the molding temperature. So that when it goes to molding temperature, if at all if it is a solid, it becomes liquid and it quickly flows around. So it spreads on the dye. The commonly used releasing agents are uh, are citric acid. Uh, which is having a melting point of 700 degrees Celsius. Uh, then we have zinc cyrate which has a melting point of 122 degrees Celsius, magnesium styrate which has 130 degrees Celsius and calcium styrate which is at 155 degree Celsius. These are some of the things, uh, some of the uh, releasing agents which are used. What are the additives which are used? The additives basically are used to give smoothness of to the surface, it gives color to the surface. It sometimes also tries to avoid some of the dimensional uh, inaccuracies. For example, warpage is one. So, the low profile additive imparts smooth surface on the surface uh, the on the product and low the smooth surface indicated by shallow hills and valleys are uh, which can be measured by uh, profilometer can be used to measure uh, what amount of additive is used so that it gets uh, smooth on the surface. So, warpage is a serious problem while using the conventional resins. So, this warpage can be practically eliminated by adding some amount of additives so that you get a better quality output. So, this is the process. So, here is a fixed die, here is a moving die, the load is applied from here. This is a charge, so it is a polymer which is a polymer which can be made out of TP or TS and then they are reinforced okay. and the reinforcement can be of volume fraction may be from 0 so maybe from 10 percent to 30 percent maximum. So, this is what it is and then we try to apply pressure the, the material whatever is there the volume is known. So, it covers this uh, uh, the volume here and then tries to give you an output. 
Generally what happens? We always used to have excess volume here. So, that this tries to form something like flash and these flash that means to say for example, if you have a box uh, and then you try to apply load. So, when you get a required shape a cup or something. So, you get something like this. So, this is called the flash these flashes are removed. So, that you get the sound quality output and by the way these flashes are also intentionally made in the die. For example, if you consider this portion is to be trimmed they are intentionally given why because this puts a restriction to the flow of the polymer and because of this restriction there is a uniform distribution of material which happens inside the die. So, these are intentionally flashes given. So, this gets trimmed and then you get a required output. So, this process is called as compression molding process where in which you try to choose proper matrix, proper reinforcement, proper thickener, proper releasing agent and other fillers to get the required output. So, the molding process SMC is nothing but a sheet metal process is cut into rectangular size and placed at the bottom half of a preheated mold and here where is the heat applied? The heat is applied in the mold. So, you can you will have heat uh, the heaters which are here and this will heaters are there in the die it can be on the die or it can be on the plate also. So, you can have here heaters so that the uniform heating happens you can apply electricity or you can even apply oil. So, heat the surface die gets heated so that the workpiece also gets uh, the charge also gets heated. So, the rectangular plies are uh, are called as charges ok. So, SMC sheet metal. So, here it is bulk. So, here what SMC is we cut into rectangular pieces it is something like a bread loaf. So, you cut into several small thin layers and they are placed on the bottom. So, each ply is there and then they are called as charge. So, 30 to 90 percent of the total area uh, uh, is, is covered by the total area and the remaining area is filled by force flow of the charge. So, I said there will be small amount of gap because of this pressure it goes off. So, uh, the mold is the mold is closed by bringing the upper half uh, of the mold uh, to a certain velocity it comes and rams over the die and then you get an output. So, here we assume that one is fixed one is moving you can have in real time both moving. So, the either the bottom is stationary top moves or top is stationary bottom moves or you can have both moving that is left to your requirement. Typical speeds are 40 millimeters per second uh, with SMC and 80 uh, with uh, GMT. So, uh, the GMT is made up of glass fiber mat and the thermoplastic resin such as PP. The, the compression molding of GMT is discussed in thermoplastic manufacturing process we will see in the next section. So, please hold on with this GMT later we will discuss it, but as of now you have to record SMC sheet, mold, uh, sheet molding compound or a process SMC uh, we are trying to do at 40 millimeters per second. So, these are some of the uh, this thing. So, as I told you temperature pressure and time. So, these three things play a very very important role the weightages need not be uniform ok. So, the temperature and pressure required for curing must be as low as possible to reduce the production cost right because if the temperature goes high or the pressure goes high immediately it needs a power pack it needs a higher temperature to control. So, these two fellows has to be properly done if the temperature is not properly maintained viscosity will not be there. If viscosity is not there impure quality if the pressures are very high then the viscosity the flow will not be proper. So, we have to maintain a proper pressure such that there is a flow also happening in the charge. The consistency of the mold component must be such that the material flows into all parts and cavities of the die without any defects. So, blow hole is one defect. The molding operation the pressure should not be so high such that it tries to break the fiber or the temperature should not be very high to degrade the fiber and the matrix ok. So, in, in compression molding process we fairly get a very good surface finish uh, and uh, the 
uh, the crazing, cracking, fracture, edge chipping and porosities are some of the defects which can be avoided by choosing proper process parameters. The fiber pattern should not be visible on the surface of the product, this is a very important. That means to say the marks which are there should not be there and shrinkage after compression molding process should be as minimum as possible. So, this is nothing but I was previously talking about warpage the same thing here. Wa see the interesting part of polymer is as soon as you make a polymer product inside a die it might have a, a shape which you intended to make, but over a period of time there will be residual stresses. So, these residual stresses allows the polymer either to deform or to shrink so that it tries to uh, it, it shrinks and it produces a poor quality output. So, when we try to do this compression molding process we try to add ingredients and maintain the shrinkage to as minimum as possible. So, the preheat so you can definitely put the charge and then heat, but when you have a preheat already done. So, then the thermal gradient is not very high maintaining a thermal gradient is a low thermal gradient is very very important. So, uh, so we always what we do is we preheat the die and then we put the charge. So, when the mold in uh, when the with the movement of the mold the charge starts flowing inside the mold and fill the mold. The flow of the mold component causes uh, removal once the flow happens. So, there ha there will be enough of air gap. So, this gap has to be released. So, there will be small vent holes on the dice through which it can go out. So, the, there is a reasonable time for curing. So, that means to say you, you press the component uh, the two dice close it and then you will not immediately release. We wait for some cure so for some time. So, this time uh, is basically given for curing time. During the curing time there will be very high heat and pressure also applied so that we make sure that there is not much of shrinkage. So, once the die from the top half and the bottom half of the die are released. So, then the ejector pins gets into action and releases the component. So, we always have a cycle time of 1 to 4 minutes. So, for us you can this cycle time includes the injection time or the pressing time injection time or the pressing time whatever it is pressing time and the holding time. Holding time is very important if you do not hold a polymer it tries to uh, uh, it tries to take back uh, the old memories that means to say it tries to shrink it tries to revolve it tries to twist. So, all these things happen. So, holding time is basically to uh, to make sure the polymer loses its memory. So, that is the analogy they say. So, holding time is given. So, because of the holding time only this cycle time goes to 1 minute to 4 minutes. So, these parts may be um, uh, made by compression molding are usually thin as compared to that of resin transfer molding, injection molding and other manufacturing processes. So, the important process parameters are charge which we all already know. Then we have pressure what is the pressure we apply then temperature and then time. So, generally what happens we do not see if, if you take this is the uh, time and this is the temperature we do not go drastically like this and then we do not drastically come out. So, what we this is not good. So, what we do is we try to take temperatures and we try to take time and this I am not giving you the value this is all in degree Celsius. So, what they do is they try to take it to some time maintain it for some time ramp it for some time maintain it for some time ramp it maintain it ramp it maintain it and then slowly they allow to uh, cure. So, by this way what happens you have a uniform heating of the die and also the charge and they always try to maintain it for some time this is nothing but the holding time. So, this is a better cycle as compared to this cycle. So, here the cycle time is less here it is large, but still this produces a good quality output. So, what are the big advantages of this process? So, we have one it is a good surface finishing process, it is a faster production process, 
it is low cost process just like hand layer process you can have uniform density provided your char in dinner charge the reinforcement is uniformly dispersed you can get uniform shrinkage if you play with the uh, resin and other properties you can uh, improve the impact strength uh, due to uh, this uh, non de no degradation of the fiber you can start doing it the dimensional accuracies are high the internal stresses and warpages are as minimum as possible and it is less labor intensive and you can do it with a semi skilled labor so what are the big disadvantages the curing time can go very large depending upon the size of the part the uh, there there will be uneven parting line see parting line is one thing which is very important when you use two dies when you use two dies see the parting surface is very important the parting surface is a surface this is a top die and this is a bottom die so the parting lines are lines where in which uh, you, wherever you try to split the die into two halves so you will see a parting line this locating the parting line is very very important parameter if you uh, because this parting line location is directly proportion to the strength of the product so people try to first understand where to put the parting line and then try to maintain the parting line such that the strength is uniformly distributed so there is a big science uh, people who study polymers and then injection molding process there is a big science behind it locating and there is lot of research also going on so it is not suitable for very low volume production and it is also not suitable for very large so it is only basically suitable for uh, batch production so here if you use a thermo set when you produce a scrap you cannot reuse it so these are some of the components which are made out of uh, compression molding in fact these buttons are not reinforced but these buttons the interesting part is these buttons have internally they have also kept some fibers that's for maybe uh, uh, the aesthetic purpose but uh, these are made out of uh, compression molding so you have this uh, di dining wares have been made knobs have been made out of this process when you see large components like uh, the covers which is used to for uh, machineries have been made suitcases have been made through this automobile exteriors are made through this process and electrical parts the the fixtures for plug points have been made through this process so this process is very commonly used and it has wide set of applications so assignment for today's class so what you will do is you will try to make a try to take a dough maybe a dough which is of two different ingredients you take material a and material b you choose whatever is your material material b can be china clay and material a can be some toy uh, which is available today so you can take those dough and after taking this dough maybe you take some 50 grams and then take 50 grams of china clay now what you do is you try to mix this dough with abrasives what are abrasives you can take sand mix it up with sand so now you will see what uh, and then uh, oh, you mix it up with sand so first you will record what is the dough viscosity again qualitatively not quantitatively next after mixing the abrasives what happens to the viscosity and how much does it increase maybe half one third in a very crude fashion next what you do is you try to take uh, this dough which i will now say a composite dough this composite dough you try to take it and then put it inside a die again this die can be a small cup okay and then you press this with hand so now you will see what amount of force you apply for these two materials and once you press it with hand release it from the cup 
and study the look, I mean to say the surface, surface of the component. So, this will try to give you a feel how does a compression molding process work in composites. So, the assignment I repeat you take a dough any two material it can be a toy clay or it can be a china clay you take any one then you mix it up with abrasives you make a composite dough. This composite dough is put inside a cup and then you press it with hand and then you try to make a part. Then after making the part release the part out of the die and then you start assessing which of the two dough is giving a better finish. And here if you still have time you can play with changing the volume fraction of the abrasives. Okay. So, with this uh, we come to a conclusion of compression molding process, thank you.